this is Veena Prashant from Digital Access Pass. Welcome to DAP. This is the DAP uh, admin panel, and the goal of this video is to give you a quick overview, a quick tour of the DAP admin panel. The goal of this video is uh, not to show you how to set up everything within DAP because we have other how-to videos. The goal of this video is to show you what all is possible uh, in DAP, you know, the different DAP features, a quick overview of all the DAP features. All right, so let's get started. There are two ways to access the DAP admin panel. You can access it directly outside of WordPress by going to whatever is the name of your site, slash DAP, slash login.php, and, and, and it will bring up a login form, and you can put in your DAP admin email ID and DAP admin password and log in that way. Or you can log into um, DAP admin dashboard from within your WordPress admin panel by clicking on the link digital access pass in the left side uh, bar of your WordPress um, control panel. Now, uh, once you click on it, it will bring you uh, to the DAP admin dashboard here. That's because I'm already logged in. But if you're not logged in, it will bring you to uh, the login page where you can put in your DAP admin ID and password and log in. Now let's uh, take a look at uh, the different menu options um, within the DAP admin dashboard. The first one, let's start with uh, the admin home. Here you will see that there are uh, four different types of reports and uh, you can pull uh, reports based on uh, dates. You can select the date range. You can uh, uh, select you know, one of these options if you want and uh, you have to be on DAP 4.1 or above to be able to use these options. But if you wanna just select the date range, then uh, pick any date and uh, just say run all report. And basically by default, you will see it picks the current date and goes backward by seven days. So it pulls uh, seven days uh, report going backwards from today's date. Um, let's take a look at uh, the individual reports. The first one says earning report by product. So this shows for uh, you know all the products that you have split by product, it shows you a breakdown of you know total number of sales and uh, the net sales after you know any refund that you may have processed uh, for the product. So basically, this is a summary of that product sales you had and what was the net sales uh, of that product after the refunds. The member summary shows you a summary of you know how many paid members you have, how many uh, users that you have that you mark you the admin uh, mark the users as paid and how many users are just free users and how many users have their access expired to one of your products so you know all of that you will see here there might be some overlap here between paid and say you know expired because a user might be a paid user but access might have expired so uh, just uh, keep that in mind uh, the members per product breakdown shows you a per product pick breakdown of the same thing. You know, how many paid users of a product, how many uh, admin um, has marked, how many users has paid, you know, that number here and stuff like that. So same thing, but breakdown by product here. And earning summary by month shows you, you know, per month breakdown uh, of how many sales you had and net sales. So similar to what you had here, here it was... Uh, product-based uh, breakdown for uh, sales, and here it's a uh, month-year-based breakdown of uh, earning summary. Now here, the incoming affiliate traffic, it shows you know who the affiliate is, the user ID of the affiliate, the name of the affiliate. HTTP referrer shows the URL from where the traffic is coming from. So basically the URL where the affiliate link was clicked on. So if you have, you know, Joe the affiliate, uh, his link um, on a website where he has a nice article about your site and then he has the affiliate link uh, pointing to his own affiliate link and to your site uh, and somebody clicks on that, then this HTTP referrer will basically catch uh, uh, that URL. And destination is basically where the affiliate link is pointing to. So user clicks on the link and then is the link being redirected to some other page on your site rather than the home page? If yes, then what is that page? And so destination will capture that. Now let's take a look at the DAP products levels page. Whether you want to build a list or you want to offer multiple products, paid product, free product, 
one time products subscription products all of that is all centered around a product in dapp so to manage any of that you just create a product in dapp and basically the dapp products page is divided into three sections there is the main section where you define the product elements uh, the name of the product the price of the product whether it's a recurring product subscription product or a one time product now the third party notification email ids if you want dapp to automatically send notification to a uh, third party services like say aweber you can specify your aweber email uh, list name here and dapp will automatically send notification to this list when a user is being added to a product and then when the user completes uh, confirmation uh, when they receive the aweber confirmation email they will automatically be added to the aweber list uh, you can specify a comma separated list of IDs here, email IDs here, and DAP will send notification to each one of these IDs when a new user signup happens. So you can put your own email ID here and DAP will notify you when a new signup happens to that product. Uh, as far as third party plugins are concerned, you can write your own plugins, uh, plugin classes, and DAP will uh, call the classes that you wrote um, when um, a user is being added to a product or when a user is being removed from a product. So upon those events, that will automatically trigger calls to the, those plugins. And we have separate videos that, that talk about it. That's how we integrated MailChimp and get response with DAB. Uh, double opt-in, you can make your product single opt-in, double opt-in uh, up to you, uh, not required by DAB that the product should be double opt-in in certain cases, but you know it's entirely configurable by the admin. So you decide whether your product should be a double opt-in or a single opt-in product. If there is no double opt-in subject or body, then automatically the product um, becomes single opt-in product and you can specify you know, the thank you message and this will be the message that goes out to the user after they sign up to the product. And um, this, will, this should carry their email ID and password. You can use the DAP merge tags to communicate their uh, DAP login and their email ID and password. Um, to log into their membership. All the merge tags that you can use in the emails are all here and uh, you know you can you can use this. So this is uh, this pretty much sums up the product definition part in DAP. Uh, we have uh, you know videos that talk about the product definition and all the other sections and product uh, products page and uh, each one of these fields in much more detail. Uh, so I won't be covering um, uh, details in this video. This video is just supposed to be a a quick overview of um, all the pages in DAP. Content dripping and content protection is uh, a key area in DAP, a key feature of DAP. And you can do that by selecting the product in the DAP products page and then coming down to the content dripping section. Here you can specify the post pages, categories, or uh, individual files that you want to protect. And again, we have separate videos that uh, talks in detail about how to do dripping or uh, content protection. But uh, I just wanted to briefly show you where this is done in this video. And um, you can come down a little bit and you can do the same with the email. So for the content that you drip, you can uh, actually set up a corresponding email that drips on the user to remind the user of the content that's going to be available to them based on their drip setting. So you can set up uh, content uh, dripping and email autoresponder dripping and synchronize them with each other so it's more meaningful for the customer. Uh, obviously, it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to use the DAP inbuilt uh, email autoresponder or whether you want to integrate DAP with a third-party autoresponder service like, say, Aweber or GetResponse or MailChimp or any other uh, autoresponder of your choice. Uh, you can do that. And then uh, instead of using DAP for email dripping, you can use your autoresponder service for email dripping. If you look at our documentation section, it talks about what we currently have, what we currently support as well as you know how you can extend it by writing your own plugin classes and integrating that. Uh, all of that is uh, specified here. Um, so you can do any of this. And also uh, there's documentation that talks about uh, uh, what are the advantages of using a third party autoresponder service uh, versus using the DAPS inbuilt autoresponder service. So you can take a look at that as well. Now let's take a look at uh, product chaining. Uh, what product chaining allows you to do within DAP is uh, you can set up rules that says if a user is being upgraded from one product to another, then automatically remove their access from the, you know, from say the lower level product. So if a user is upgrading from a lower membership level to a higher membership level, 
you can set up rules that says when a user is upgrading, automatically remove their access uh, when the upgrade is complete uh, from the lower level product. This way, the user will not have access to some of the duplicate content that is part of both the lower level and upper level product, as well as some of the marketing stuff, emails that you might be sending out as part of the lower level product uh, to have the user upgrade to higher level. You, won't, you don't want to set, continue to send them out after the user has upgraded to the higher level. So that will take care of automatically removing their access from the lower level product. Um, and you can specify any product you want up to you. You can say if a user is being added to or if a user be is being removed from a certain product, automatically either add, give them access to a certain product or remove their access from certain product. Same way with the add rule. You can say if a user is being added to a certain product, automatically remove their access from a certain lower level product or give them additional access to as a bonus to another product. So it's up to you how you manage it. Uh, you can do this for uh, subscription product as well as uh, one-time products. So so as long as DAP keeps receiving notification for the parent product, it will keep taking action on the chained child product.